welcome to this week's featured game from the uh, Senior Dooms Tournament of Doom. Yes, there is a lot of words of doom in this. Joining me tonight is nobody because it's just me, Senior Doom, whom solo casting this week's featured featured game of the week. This week we have Lost Zone Duraladon being piloted piloted here by PJ. Uh, PJ, I'm sorry, I want to screw up your last name. Uh, Wittisik. I apologize in advance. You can correct me in the YouTube comments as you as you may. Going up against Rotary Rocket, playing your standard Mew deck. So we see we see a PJ open up with the Radiant Greninja. He's able to go ahead and toss away a Metal Energy, get a few more cards. He does have a Quick Ball in hand, but what does he want to get rid of? Like I'm looking at the list. And I'm I'm seeing, seeing what options they have. You kind of, and up against Mew, you, you kind of want to hold on to those temples of Sinnoh. Ooh, not 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 the comfy you were looking for, but have to have to live with it for now. See that get discarded as well, which I believe PJ plays way of bringing. Um, energy. I am checking the deck list now, which we will feature af after the game. He currently plays two ordinary rods. So watching watching the energies be discarded is not as much of a problem for PJ as say maybe for a regular Arceus Raladon deck. Having to lost zone away a switch here is, could be painful, but with the battle VIP pass, they'll be able to go ahead and maybe get another Confi out for next turn. Uh, definitely get a Duraladon, and they also do play. They do play a hey, the uh, Drapion V, which is very very strong counter against Mew. So we will see how this this one goes. See the two drops. No reason to put down the Temple of Suno yet. It, does, it gives no advantage considering that Mew usually plays its own set of decks, including. Including ones like Path of the Peak, this Mew deck, currently piloted here by Rotary Rocket, plays three Path of the Peaks. It is the double tur turbo ver version. It does what it wants to, is where it cash the double turbo energy and attack with its with Mew V Max. So, knowing this being an open deck list tournament, PJ here knows he doesn't need to put down the temple until he sees an attachment. But even then, he kind of wants to hold it back a little bit because Path of the Peak is going to be very advantageous for Rotary Rocket it, because it will allow him to go through the Duraludons with higher attacks that are not the normal base 130. So we'll see another Genesis V come down here, and we'll see a draw of three coming from Rotary's side on the Mew. Uh, sadly, we don't have looks on that side to be able to tell, and it looks like they're going to go go protective and bring the the Genesec V up, as PJ has all three of his uh, of his temples in hand, and now he's deciding between another Colrus, which is draw ability, or the Cramorant, which could be a, a nice single prize attacker. We'll see him go in with Cramorant. Probably the quick evolve here coming in with the Duraludon. Uh, it could see a, a further draw with the Radiant Greninja. He has had some very, very bad choices coming in tonight. He keeps, keeps seeing the energies hit on the flower selecting. He's thrown, uh, thrown a few already into the discard as well. And he currently plays a 6-5 line. So seeing... Two metal energies in the loss zone now. That means he can power up two Duraludons, and that's about it. But against 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 Mew, do you need more? As we see in the nice switch here, and the Hisuian heavy ball go away. Even in a sense, EJ here. Wants Mew to take a KO on some on one of these confies. It sets up very nicely to have the have that at right hand 
and go off. And again, with another metal energy, it's not what you want to see. Could see a Mirage Gate now. The last two energies in deck. And I have, I almost, I don't know if I agree with the temple, but it could come into play. They do only have four cards in hand and only three Pokemon active. So we could see uh, Mew here, here try and burn a few more cards. We did see a uh, one of the candies get burned earlier. And so Mew is down a little bit on, on power. And PJ himself has quite a few energies in the discard. Now we're seeing the attach here to the Temple of Sinnoh. Okay, here comes the Lost Vacuum. So the attachment won't matter as much. Do toss away a path to the peak though, in, in, in accordance. So it was almost a one to one trade. Go ahead and see. We see the uh, Ultra Ball here, probably going for either another or Genesect, possibly for a Mu Max. Uh, it could be either. As we now see the Forest Seal Stone, one of the best cards that Muse had added. Then a Marnie. Now, I don't know how much the Marnie may benefit DJ here, but it could be very, very nice considering now he has most of his uh, stadiums back in the deck. He does have a Mirage Gate. Uh, he does also have a uh, Scoop Up Net as a possibility. And we're going to see him come straight up. We could see a KO this turn as well. They have the boss. They could go a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive. Go after one of the Genesex. They could uh, just continue and go through the Mew. One of the things I like personally as a, as a Draladon player is playing a heavy line of bosses orders for the Mew. It's easier to take. You can take six prizes off three turns off three Genesex versus four turns against Mu V Max. So I like to play the heavy line of, of bosses orders, get those out, do um, take down the Genesex, draw, eliminate their draw power, and continue to go that way. That's to me is the is the line I like to take. And if anything, he has the one with the forest seal stone has not been used. That is actually a target to go after as well. Because now that would have removed draw ability and the ability to just take what they wanted. We don't see the CPJ get anything too great off the prizes, but they're not in a horrible place. Now what how many bosses does PJ play? They only play one. So we've seen their one of, and now they are they're out they're out of anything else. They don't play Serena. Uh, they don't play ropes, so they don't have any any other outs. At least at least to bring something up, they can still survive against Mew Vmax. Mew is only hitting it for one ten a turn, and without any of the candies, it's going to take it three turns to take down a Duraludon Vmax. Now it takes less. Well, we do see the Temple of Sinnoh. We will see that in play. And we do have his draw out with the Radiant Greninja. And we see a Temple of Sinnoh again. I, I, I feel like we have to, have to pick up the Radiant Greninja and draw another two. There's a lot of a lot of energy in, in in the discard already. We have two energy in in the lost zone. Ooh, still not what we're looking for here. We'll at least see the coffee come in come in the next turn. But alternatively, 
if rotary rocket here does not have okay they do they do have it there usually we <laughs> do they not have it and they they did that you they would have to find a second energy for the Mew to attack Now here's the interesting thing, because Rotary Rocket is playing Path to the Peak, Ink Mew, he is playing four Lost Vacuums in his deck list. Though he is going to continuously knock off any stadium that is in play, with almost no issue. So the Temple of Sinnohs have a little bit of a harder time staying in play. Oh, here we go. There. Do have KO. Special the path to the peak. We'll see Temple of Sinnoh come down. Does not feel like Peach. There's three of the four Lost Vacuums are in the discard. And I believe the entirety of the Path of the Peaks are in the disc are, are in play as well. So there's a good chance the Temple of Sinnoh could stay as we see the VMAX. Depending on if they prize the last lost vacuum or not. Now the, que the question comes here, do you want the Quick Ball or do you want the Colrus? The Quick Ball guarantees that you get a Duraludon out. Or the Drapion, actually. You get the Drapion and get a big KO here. Then it's a hope that... It's, it's a hope they, they don't have an answer to the uh, Temple of Sinnoh. If they do, that, could be, that, that will probably be the end of the Drapion. End of the game. If they don't... There it is. There's the V-Star out we were waiting for. Now we get to find out if they have it or not. And there is the Lost Vacuum. And that will be the game right there as we'll be able to see the Choice Bell as well. Power Tablet. Rotary Rocket has in every single way. Comes in with the Techno Blast, KOing the Drapion V and giving them the win. Now here's the Arceus Ar Arceus uh, Arceus Duraludon. No, it is not Arceus Duraludon. It is Duraludon Lost Box. Now, we do have the pilot on, on here. Let me go ahead and unmute and uh, undeafen them. Hey, PJ. How are you doing? So, we, we saw you take a hard loss here. No, uh, I, I, I realize I have you on mute. Sorry. He, he said, uh, the draws were not very optimal. I'm trying to record this, and now I'm... Uh, hello, saying, everyone. Hello. Man. <laughs> and now I, I, I keep bloopers in. That's just who, uh, I, you're that, fine, that's just who I am. Uh, the, the draws were very bad, but... Yeah, um, yeah, draws were pretty awful at the beginning of the game. But, hey, you know, we were uh, we started to swing. Yeah, I mean, we were, you were literally, literally one card away from winning. If that last lost vacuum was in the prizes still... They would have a very, very difficult time taking that KO. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely one of those weird decks that you know either it's got it or it doesn't. When you're playing up against Mew, and you know, obviously there's counters that are in there, but you know, this this deck build um, is meant to come up against Mew, but I think it's better obviously against Fusion Mew um, than it is the uh, the DTE Mew, just because of the path alone. Just path hits so hard. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And especially the one Rotary Rocket played had four Lost Vacuums in it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. <laughs> I yeah. mean, four, four Vacuums is kind of warranted in a deck like that, for sure. Um, but, I mean, looking at prize cards and looking at the Lost Zone, looking at the, the stadiums that they had like in play, I'm like, okay, well, that's, there's one card missing. And they have a pretty big hand, so take the chance here and, and see what happens. 
Yeah, and I did, I was wondering when you took the quick ball over the, over the Colrus at the end. Mm-hmm. I had actually forgotten you had a Drapion V in the list. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of my a lot of my arc dura decks or even just duras i keep referring yeah. to this arc dura because this isn't but this is what everyone's <laughs> used to um right i don't play the drapion so i'm like okay how do we get get mm. around it and then you grab right. the quick ball then you pull the drapion out i was like oh mind blown okay <laughs> yeah yeah drapion is so good obviously in those matches too but like even if i played up against control with a list like this i could have double mirage gate to that and just had an out um otherwise you know i just get uh get kind of stomped in but as far as it goes i mean i have wanted lost zone to play duraludon for a while i really think that um after crown zenith comes out it's going to be really good i've seen a couple of lists in japan kind of pilot it but i've always wanted to try it free um free the crown zenith set coming out so i kind of threw it together uh, i took a lot of inspiration from Vinny fernandez's list that he just uh piloted he got first in some tournament with lost zone gudra and i'm like well maybe it, it's time to actually put drill it on back together and, and test it out a little bit and, uh up until this match it's been doing pretty good yeah, you came in 3 0. Uh, losing to Mew is just a Mew thing sometimes. Right. You just lose yeah. to it. And you talked about earlier actually going up against Control with the Drapion uh, uh, Mirage Gate. I've been yeah. playing a Lost Box with that with Drapion in as a tech specifically mm-hmm. for Control. You can, right. you, I mean, Mew can, can be a hard matchup for Lost Box. Oh, yeah. But I did that. And I've never seen a person concede faster in a tournament. <laughs> and then angry messages than I had then. Like, how did you oh, not yeah. see it coming? You had my deck right. list. Right. I mean, as far as it goes with, with Drapion, it's just like that weird tech that nobody really likes. Everybody thought was a bad card, and it turned out to be such a great card. in so many lists, whether it's, you know, Lugia teching it in or, you know, decks like Lost Box teching it in. I really think that Drapion is is a solid play, regardless of what type of decks. Especially like looking towards the future, uh, Mew is going to be extra good. Um, so Drapion is. If you haven't bought Drapion now, make sure you buy a couple of them. Some people in our chat are claiming Drapion is bad with lots of exclamation <laughs> points. I will not name them, but uh, <laughs> I I think PJ and I disagree. Uh, so uh, well. Um, it looks like some people in chat thought that uh, Ice Rider was better than Kyurem too, so we'll we'll leave it at that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as uh, as far as the list goes, I I definitely see uh, warrant for maybe more stadiums. Like obviously losing the uh, the last Temple of Sinnoh at the end of the game there um, is is just like the the heartbreaking part of it, but it's so good into Lugia. Like this deck feels oh. amazing into Lugia. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. I've actually personally in my Arc Dura list, I've gone up to five stadiums now. Yeah. Five stadiums, yeah. four bosses ordered. But that's that's working for my play style. I wouldn't yeah. wouldn't give it to everybody. Right. Yeah, I mean, um I think that the the fifth stadium in any Dura list is definitely solid it's a solid play um for that's what i played in arlington actually is arc dura and i had play tested this deck right before the tournament started and i went up against arc dura funny enough um and i turned to mirage gate to a uh, v max and then just wiped out his arc before he could do anything so um the deck is faster than i had assumed at the beginning um, and when I put it together, I, I tested out a few hands just to see, okay, maybe I just luck sack somebody. And it just set up pretty easily every single time. So if, if anybody wants like a new, weird way to play Lost Box, I definitely recommend just copy paste in this. Yeah, I assume I'm going to, to give it a shot. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to give my the players who come on stream and are able to interview a chance to like uh, just kind of self-promote. Anything you want to kind of promote? Sure. Yeah, um, check out the Shuffle Squad. You can check them out on YouTube. You can check them out uh, pretty much everywhere, social media. 
Um, make sure you're checking out all the, the links in the description of all of our YouTube videos. Uh, shout out to Senior Doom for hosting this tournament tonight. This has been awesome so far. Thank you. And with that, uh, if you're on my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, like and subscribe, comment, all that good algorithm stuff. I'm Senior Doom. We just watched Arc Arc Lost Box go up against Mew VMAX, piloted with Arc Lost Box here, piloted by PJ uh what is that? Is that how you say your last name, dude? Uh, Wituzik. It, it sounds Yeah, I know. It's I've, it's so weird. It's the most complicated, easy name. <laughs> uh, but you're not the the first person to mispronounce it a little bit but you got pretty close you, I, I'll give you an 8 out of 10 awesome I slaughtered it probably like 10 times I think I just called you PJ <laughs> as much as I could up against Rotary Rocket again thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you at the next Tournament of Doom